I have I, which is the iota or the imaginary unit, where I square equals negative one. Then I have zero, which is, well, zero. Then I take both these fascinating numbers and form the expression zero raised to I. We might think that if we raise zero to any value, then we will get zero, just like how zero raised to two is zero, or zero raised to 10 is zero. So we come to the conclusion that zero raised to any power x equals zero. Yes, that is true, but only when x is a positive real number. And we all know that if x is less than or equal to zero, then the expression becomes undefined. So what about the case when x is not a real number, but an imaginary number instead? For that, we have to understand what it means to raise a number to an imaginary power. In general, we use this exponential form of a power using the number e like this to define any tricky exponents. So, x raised to i becomes e raised to the power i times the natural log of x. Now we can use Euler's formula, which tells us that e raised to i theta equals cos theta plus i sine theta. Here, theta is the natural log of x. So, x raised to i becomes this. Now, if we plug the value of x as zero into this formula, we run into the problem because this becomes the natural log of zero, which is undefined. This is because if the natural log of x equals any value m, then we have the relation x equals e raised to the power m. Now, there does not exist any real or complex number m such that e raised to m equals zero, which is why the natural log of zero is undefined. So instead of evaluating zero to the i directly, what if we bring a number, say, z, which gets infinitely close to the value zero and not exactly zero? So in such a case, we have to bring in the concept of limits. Problem is that this limit does not exist because if we approach zero from two different directions, from the positive side and the negative side, then the value of the limit will not be equal in both cases. And the reason for that is this value of theta, or this natural log of x. Let us see why. Consider this x and y axis, where x axis represents a real number line, and y axis represents an imaginary number line then any point z on this coordinate plane can be written as z equals x plus i y. Now, if we draw a circle that passes through this point with its center as the origin, then the distance from the origin to the point is the magnitude r, which, using Pythagoras' theorem, will be equal to square root of x square plus y square. And the angle it makes with the positive x-axis is called theta which will be equal to tan inverse of y over x. This allows us to write z in polar form as r times e raised to i theta. So let us first consider the limit of getting closer to zero from the positive side. Look at this graph of the natural log of x. As x gets closer and closer to zero, the natural log of x gets closer and closer to negative infinity. So e raised to i times natural log of x will be e raised to i times negative infinity, or cause of negative infinity, plus i sine of negative infinity. What will be the magnitude of this complex number? It will be 1 because compare both of them and we get r as 1 here, but the direction keeps spinning wildly. This is because when you take cause of negative infinity, and sine of negative infinity, you're trying to evaluate trigonometric functions at an unbounded angle. And trigonometric functions like cos and sine oscillate forever. They just keep spinning around the unit circle, repeating every two pi radians. That means the complex number ends up pointing in a direction that keeps changing rapidly without approaching any specific final value. Now for the case when z approaches zero from the negative direction, we have to use the complex definition of the natural log, because the natural log of x is not defined for x less than zero. 
This is how we define complex logarithms, and if you want to know why, I have covered the same in this video. So, x to the i becomes this. Now, this is the argument of x, which will be the angle of this line since x is approaching zero from the negative side, and thus the argument of x will be pi. Now, this n can be any integer, and thus this expression has infinitely many possible values, each corresponding to a different branch. So unless we chose a value of n, say principal value of n equals zero, the result will be multi-valued and doesn't give us one final answer. So if we take n as zero, we get x raised to i as this, where the magnitude now becomes e raised to minus pi. And this term is the same as what we had for the limit with z on the positive side of zero. This means this thing will also oscillate forever, but not inside a unit circle, but in a circle with radius of e raised to minus pi. So, if we summarize, zero raised to i cannot be evaluated, like regular exponents, because it involves the natural log of zero, which is undefined. When we try to approach zero from the positive or negative direction using complex logarithms, the result ends up spinning endlessly around a circle, either of unit radius or smaller, depending on the branch we choose. That's why zero raised to i has no unique, well-defined value. It's undefined or multi-valued depending on how you approach it. This shows that sometimes in mathematics, the journey to arrive at an answer is far more beautiful than the answer itself. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.